So have you ever wondered why a rocket engine has multiple nozzles and why they are placed so close to each other? Well, today I'm going to be showing you why that is and the physics behind rocket propulsion and the main reason why the rocket engines are clustered together. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Vin. Welcome to VD Engineering, where I cover videos on a wide variety of aerospace subjects on a monthly basis. So previously I had made two videos on how a rocket engine works in the past and they were very well received. This video will be a little bit more complicated, but I'll be doing my best to explain it in layman's terms. So to recap, a rocket engine produces a force which pushes it forward. So looking at the rocket equation, we can see that the force is mainly proportional to the mass flow rate, which simply means how much of fluid is going in a section per second, along with the exit velocity. So to start off, we need to first understand something called the area Mach relation. So this relation means that in compressible flows, when the area increases, the flow speed increases as well. The exit area divided by the float area is called the nozzle expansion ratio and we'll be looking at this back and forth. Since the exit mark is a function of the exit velocity divided by the speed of sound, the exit velocity is obviously directly proportional to, to the exit mark number. The rocket chambers contain pressurized gases at a very high temperature and if you want to produce a large force by just using one nozzle, we would obviously need a large Mach number at the exit, right? Because we, our goal is to get a high exit velocity. And this means that we would need a nozzle with a very large expansion ratio. So let's say that we now use two nozzles. Since each nozzle produces a specific force, you essentially need to produce only half the force to achieve the same overall force, right? Because it's divided by two. This means that if you have four nozzles, each nozzle only needs to produce one fourth the required force and this means that the smaller nozzles can have a smaller expansion ratio because they don't need to achieve a high Mach number at the exit. So using multiple nozzles with a smaller expansion ratio is preferred by overusing a large nozzle with just, you know, a large expansion ratio. So you might be thinking, why is it preferred to use a smaller expansion ratio and multiple nozzles? The reason is because to optimize aerodynamic performance, the rocket engine needs to operate along its optimum condition. I explained this in part two and part one where the nozzle mostly operates at over-expanded conditions and under-expanded conditions and where there's a difference in air pressure outside versus the air pressure at the exit. And this is something we don't want because it is not optimal conditions for the vehicle itself. If you use a very large expansion ratio, they will have difficulty, you know, expanding properly and the rocket will be mostly heavily over-expanded or heavily under-expanded. And knee drop situations are optimal for the vehicle because you won't produce as much force and you will also burn more fuel. So you guys might be thinking, right, to increase the force, why not just, you know, increase the pressure of the fuel inside the chamber? Well, the problem is if the chamber pressure is too high, the chamber itself can also burst because rocket force chambers are mostly a pressure vessel and they can only handle a certain amount of air at a given pressure. Think about a balloon, right? If you blow too much air in a balloon, it's going to burst. It's the same idea in a rocket engine. If you put too much of air in the chamber, it's going to crack and eventually fatigue and it could also explode. So if you're confused with this concept of over expansion and under expansion, take a look at this small nozzle here, which I printed out by, you know, materials. And I'm in my room right now. So the air pressure outside is about 101 kilopascals or standard temperature and pressure. If the flow is over expanded, it will not flow along the nozzle wall and it'll just, you know, flow a little bit and then go to the exit, right? And this is not good because you, you will have too much of pressure along a portion of the wall. Let's say that the nozzle is under expanded in this room here. So what's going to happen now is that it's a bit better than over expansion. But the thing is that you will have too much of force against the wall because the pressure will want to leave, right? Because the pressure is not able to expand properly to the atmospheric conditions. It will cause a lot of side loads on nozzles and a lot of research is done in nozzles and how the side load affects its performance. These are things which engineers take into consideration while designing rocket engines. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Have a nice day. Bye.